Today we're going to look at how I built this Raspberry Pi case from 3mm plywood using the Autour Laser Master 2 Pro. Autour asked me if I'd like to try out their new Laser Master 2 Pro, so I thought it'd be good to use it to make something useful to share with you guys. If you've watched any of my previous videos, then you've probably seen my CO2 laser that I use quite often, but this is my first diode laser. The kit comes partially assembled, like most 3D printers, and features a 20 watt laser diode module, which has an optical power of 5 watts. I'll put a link to it in the video description if you'd like to get your own. It comes with everything you need to assemble it, including zip ties for cable management, a small toolkit, and even some sample pieces of wood and acrylic to experiment with. There are loads of these style diode laser engravers online, but I'll show you a couple of reasons why you should consider getting Autour's model, although a bit more expensive. The control board is where the Laser Master 2 Pro is set apart, as it's got a number of safety features which most others don't have. It's got built-in flame sensing, which stops the laser if it detects that the material has caught fire and then sounds an alarm. It's also got tilt sensors to detect if the laser has been bumped or knocked off the desk, and it'll stop the laser if it's been burning in the same spot without movement for over a minute. It's also got this prominent e-stop on the top. Some other nice finishes are the measurement scales on the aluminium extrusion, all metal gantry construction, fantastic cable management including a pre-wired drag chain and even safety glasses, although I suspect that there's a problem with these which I'll get into in a bit. When it comes time to assemble your kit, it's definitely worth heading over to their website to download the PDF version of the manual. It's much better quality than the included one, and is more up to date with better pictures. I put mine together with the included manual, and the images are not great, they're a bit small, and there are a couple of changes that have been made and haven't been updated. Things like wiring the limit switches are incorrect. In any case, it's quite easy to put together, and has a few extras like these additional L brackets in the corners, which really go to show that they're determined to give you a good quality product. One thing I don't really like is the belt tensioning on the wire axis. You just pull the belt through the legs and then secure them with a screw. It works fine but it doesn't look good when it's finished off and you can't make any adjustments to the belt tension very easily. With the kit assembled I downloaded laser gerbil and tried a couple of test engraves. It worked really well with minimal setup with the sample speeds and powers they provided in the software. I did accidentally stop the laser while engraving the grid when I was familiarizing myself with the software. When I restarted it, the laser homed to a slightly different position, so you'll notice some of the squares engraved in the second half are off by a few millimeters. But for the most part, I was really impressed with the results. I then also tried engraving on some metal. You can't actually etch the surface of metals, but I've used this product called Surmark, which you spray on and engrave over, and then just wash off with water afterwards. It allows you to engrave black markings onto metal and glass. This worked well on a stainless steel ruler, and even a dog tag. Getting back to the glasses, I haven't done much research on these, but I suspect that they're not the correct ones for this particular laser. In order to block certain wavelengths, the colour of the lenses is usually the complementary colour of the laser. This is a blue laser, so the complementary colour should be orange. This explains why the shroud around the laser is orange, but these glasses are green, so they're actually probably made for red lasers. They're better than nothing, but I'd look at getting them replaced quite soon. I then drew up an interlocking case in Inkscape to hold my Raspberry Pi with an Argon case port adapter and two 40mm fans on the front. Cutting on the Laser Master 2 Pro took a bit of experimenting to get right. I had to play around with the speeds and the number of passes until I found something that worked well. In the end I found for 3mm plywood that two passes at 250mm per minute seemed to work the best. You can't really see in the video, but cutting produces a lot of smoke. You'll definitely need an extractor or ventilation fan to remove it, or just cut in a covered outdoor area. Just be careful outdoors as the flame sensor can be set off by the sun's UV rays, which will then stop the laser. Once the parts were cut, I glued them together with some PVA wood glue.
I then got to installing the components. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4B 2GB version with a low profile ice tower for cooling. I also added a 1TB M.2 NVMe drive with a USB adapter. Two 40mm fans for the front to pull air into the case and an adapter from an Argon case to move the ports to the back. I screwed the standoffs through the case and held them in place with a nut on the back of each. I trimmed one side of a USB-C cable down to fit into the Pi alongside the Argon adapter. I then pushed it through the HDMI port before installing the Pi. The Pi is held in place with some more brass standoffs and the SD card is inserted through the fan hole. We won't need to remove or replace the SD card as we're going to be booting off the SSD once it's all set up. I then installed the ice tower and held it in place with four more screws. The fifth screw holds the Argon adapter in place using the fifth standoff in the body of the case. I then plugged in the USB power cable. Once that was done we can install the fans. I pushed some M3 nuts into each of the pockets in the fans to screw into. Pay attention to which side the cable is when you install them so that you've got enough length to reach your GPI opens. The fans are secured with 8 M3 by 12mm screws. I then plugged the fans into the power pins on the power. I used 5V pins for the front two fans and a 3.3V pin for the ice tower fan. Next I installed the NVMe drive into the USB adapter. I used a strip of thick double sided tape to hold it in place. Now we can install our clear side panel. It's worth mentioning that I had to cut this on my CO2 laser cutter as diode lasers can't cut clear acrylic. Acrylic can also just be cut by hand using a fine tooth saw or a jigsaw. The cover is held in place with some M3 by 8mm screws. And that's the case finished so let's power it on and try it out. With three fans running the case is quite noisy. But it looks pretty cool as a mini desktop computer. I also noticed that one of the LEDs on the bottom front fan is faulty, which is a bit disappointing, but I don't have another one spare at the moment. I really like the RGB LEDs in the fans, and the clear side panel to see the internals. Let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. Overall I've been quite impressed by the Auto Laser Master 2 Pro. I've seen a lot of people say that they've had difficulty getting clean cuts from a diode laser setup, but the 20 watt laser in this system makes easy work of 3mm plywood. You can also see that they've really put a lot of effort into producing a good quality product. From the custom control board with some safety features, to great cable management, etched extrusions, a drive shaft through to the far side wire axis, and full metal construction, you definitely won't be disappointed with the Laser Master 2 Pro. I definitely recommend checking it out if you'd like to take your workshop to the next level. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.